Russian atrocities in Ukraine that are hard to imagine, but you can't look away. The breakdown starts now. Good evening and welcome to The Breakdown. I'm Tara Setmayer. This is the Rick Wilson and we are back with you. It is Rick and I tonight pontificating on some of the um, headlines over the last week and spending some quality time with you since I was off doing The View last week in New York and- And they let me run run rampant. (laughs) Well, the, the show is still here. We haven't been canceled, so everything seems to be all right in my absence. Rick Wilson was at the helm without me on Thursday. Um, but we've got a great show for you. There's lots to talk about. We have uh, this, well, this atrocity happening in Ukraine that we've seen. We have a, a new national champion, not just in March Madness. We have our own MAGA Madness. We have the result of that poll here at the breakdown. Um, the Republicans are still shilling for Putin. The Putin propagandists are out in in full force. It's just despicable. Um, And we have a new ad that we are going to exclusively premiere for our loyal breakdown audience later on in the show. So stay tuned for that. But Rick Wilson, it's Tuesday. So what does that mean? Last week in the Republican Party. Roll it. Father in heaven, we firmly believe that Donald J. Trump is the current and true president of the United States. God said through his servant, Kim Clement, I will raise up the next president. His name will be Donald. We have the bombshell evidence. Russia, if you're listening, you do this or that with her emails or whatever the hell it was. Trump, I know you're watching. And I know the Space Force is watching. So the Google Chrome logo is 666. The elimination of Zuckerberg Dropbox. He's always very well informed. Zuckerberg Dropbox. Fully, completely engaged. Zuckerberg Dropbox. Energetic, articulate, and smart as hell. And then, uh... Here now with more reaction, former counsel to the president, Kellyanne Trump. Take notes, Madam Speaker. I'm about to define what a woman is for you. XX chromosomes, no tally whacker. He may not have the best history in voting and stances on things, but at least he's not having orgies, blowing coke and getting blackmailed. Cocaine fueled orgy expert Roger Stone. They want to make us all poor. They want to make you live in downtown areas and high rise buildings and walk to work or take the subway or ride an electric scooter. You know the kid. By the end of 2022, every fully vaccinated person over the age of 30 may have the equivalent of full-blown vaccine-induced immune-suppressed AIDS. Mickey is crying. Sexualizing kindergartners and first graders, they know that would not fly with the public. Man, you got a lot of weibos. Why not just rename the roller coaster, you know, Sex Mountain? Zuckerberg Dropbox. Oh, man. Okay. Well, it's Tuesday means last week in the Republican Party, and it's Tiki Tuesday. He's he's here to join Hi. us for the show. <laughs> um, Rick, I want to start with your favorite governor first. Um, <laughs> with, the, with the wag the dog video from hell, what you know, in the world? So the Van Zants are the remaining... Uh, traces of what was once Leonard Skinner, the, the, one of the greatest Southern rock bands of its era. Sweet home, Alabama. Now they are basically MAGA guys who, the, the ones that survived the plane crash are a bunch of MAGA guys. And they, they made what, and I want to take this, for, just set this aside for a second. Set aside that Ron DeSantis is a, is, is you know, that Tater is, a, is just a, a, an epic shit heel. Set that aside for a second. <laughs> Set aside the content of the thing. It's the most smarmy, schmaltzy song I've ever heard. 
it, it's it, a friend of mine who's a producer is like, it's just bad musically. All of it. It's just, it's just terrible, just like bad. top to bottom terrible. Yeah. But here's the thing. Just as Governor Pawlenty was absolutely going to be President Pawlenty <laughs> and Governor Scott Walker was absolutely going to be President Scott Walker and Governor Jeb Bush was absolutely going to be President Jeb Bush and Senator Marco Rubio was absolutely going to be President Marco Rubio and Senator Ted Cruz was absolutely going to be President Ted Cruz and on and on and on into the, into the darkness of history. This is the first steps in the DeSantis presidential campaign um, to try to humanize him a little bit and show Tater laughing and show him, you know, not looking like he's got, you know, uh, something yeah. caught in his throat all the time. Right. And he's now, got the headphones on in the booth. Right. He's like, like he's, he's like, so cool. I, how, hello, fellow kids. I like this hip music. Yeah. You know, yeah. Come on. Anyway, <laughs> but it, it is, it is, it's also representative of the hermetically sealed media bubble that the MAGAs like to live inside. Well, that's for sure. And and, uh, and so, you know, and he's had a kind of a rough week this week. And, and weirdly, it, oh, it was revealed yesterday Jesus. for DeSantis that he's holding back the records of a guy named Halsey Brashears. Now, Halsey Brashears is the former commissioner of the Department of Business and Professional Regulations in the great state of Florida. Say that three times fast. Yeah. Um, but he's also one of Matt Gates's running buddies oh, oh. And, and Greenfield's running buddies uh, in the in the child sex trafficking and child prostitution ring for which they are being investigated. Now, why would this, why would Tater hold back those those documents? Mm. I don't know. Maybe he's mm. a groomer. I mean, oh, my the, gosh. The, the bullshit with these people is piled so deep. And you think that's that's all of it, though. He also named as his spiritual advisor a man who is a deacon now in a church, but before he became a deacon, he was fired from his high school for having sex with a student. Would he be definitionally a groomer? Oh my God. All this bullshit is always projection from these people. Right. It's always projection. And what are they projecting this time? Huh, maybe it's because the Republicans had a concerted, concerted messaging effort to go after Judge Jackson as somehow being unqualified for the Supreme Court because yeah. she was lenient on on child um, uh, pedophiles and pornographers yeah. and all of that kind of thing, which was absolute BS, by the way. Of course and, it was. But that and was the line because they're over here protecting these people in the party that have these problems. So it's, it again, we always did you see this. Did you happen to see that tweet from Molly Hemingway at The Federalist uh, today? You mean uh, Megan McCain's husband's uh, website that's financed by we don't know whom? But go Megan ahead. McCain's yeah. husband's website that's financed by Teeter Peel, from what mm -hmm. I understand. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong, but we don't know who funds the Federalist, right. do we? Um, but Molly Hemingway is the editor over there, and she today He's, essentially yeah. uh, accused Mitt Romney of pedophilia. Right, because he's supporting, because he he's going to vote for Justice, uh, Kata future Katanji. Justice Katanji Brown. That's right. And he, she accused Mitt Romney essentially of pedophilia. You know, here's the thing, folks. There are pedophiles in the world, but not everyone is. And the more you use it, the more you diminish the actual impact and danger of the real ones that are It's out. QAnon gone mainstream. And of that's course, you, that's right. And it's QAnon gone mainstream. It's QAnon digging itself into further into the psyche of the Republican Party. And and you know, and they've got a lot of weird shit in the in the in the party attic these days. And 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 I, I, if I were them, just knowing the the fact that you've got people like Matt Gates and Jim Jordan running around, I, I'd be very careful with that because this thing could come back to bite you hard on the ass. And, and weirdly enough, um, weird, weirdly enough, just saying it over and over again, making it into a meme and all this other crap, um, at the end of the day, it just reduces the party further and further into a little hole. It, it does. boxes it out further and further. And makes it, it makes the party more and more, as the more and more they mainstream these, these wackadoodle conspiracy theories and, and continue to uh, level these outrageous accusations. It just shows you how out of touch and how marginalized these people are. And we can't normalize it. We see this all the time. Now we can't normalize this. QAnon, we have QAnon people already in Congress. You want more of them? You want a QAnon crazy being the chairman of the, you know, of the, of the, any committee. You've got to be kidding. You want these people in charge? That's what we're facing if Republicans yep. take Congress back over in folks, November. It will not be frat fraternity president Kevin McCarthy. 
I what did Tara, I say? Tara, Tara is the Tara is the first mover on this theory that it's not <laughs> going to be Kevin McCarthy. It's going to be Jim Jordan or MTG or some other lunatic that crawls out of the woodwork. If it's up to Matt Gates, he wants to put up Donald Trump. He says this unapologetically. And for those who don't know, you don't have to be a member of Congress to be Speaker of the House. So this is the insanity, and this is what these people. This is what's in store for people if Republicans take Congress back over. And you know, there is a lot of indications that Democrats are going to lose hist historically and all this. But we are trying to make that not become a reality. There's still time to turn this around, folks. You don't want these people in charge of anything. Yeah. And here's the thing. You know, you have you have what's going on. And I want to say thank you to Mitt Romney for doing the right thing, by yep. the way. Unlike Ben Sass, who had the opportunity to do the right thing, who gave this great speech. We gave him credit for going after the, quote, Jack Assery in the Judiciary Committee during those hearings. And what did he do? He still fell in line, which is very disappointing, being Ben Sass. Um, but thank you, Mitt Romney, for doing the right thing. And I yep. believe Murkowski and, and Collins uh, will vote for, for Katanji Brown-Jackson as well. That's and uh, she will be confirmed and history will be made. So screw all of you your attempts to try to derail her nobody's gonna her remember nobody's gonna remember the a-holes when this is all said and done no no you know, they're not nobody remembers nobody no. remembers the people that were that that are that are you know these juvenile posturing that they're doing and this performative bullshit that they're pulling but and you know nobody's what? gonna remember it at the end of the no day. but you know what they will remember they're going to remember the way that republicans have sure. reacted to putin and the atrocities in Ukraine, and how they have fallen on the wrong side of history here. Tonight, yep. Rick, I don't know if you saw this, before we came on air, there was a vote, it, it's a, it was a resolution, it's non-binding, um, supporting NATO. It was put on the House floor, okay. it was to support NATO I miss, and, I and the it. principles of you know, NATO supporting democracy around the, you know, in, in Europe, et cetera. 63 freaking Republicans voted against this resolution. That's a, Virtually one third of the entire Republican caucus voted against supporting NATO. You know, Tara, uh, uh, this is, and, and I've referred to it before in my misspent youth in the, in the defense world. <laughs> Folks, NATO was what kept the world out of a nuclear war for 70 years. It is what kept Russian tanks from rolling as inefficiently as they might have uh, done into Western Europe. It allowed the emergence of strong, stable democracies in Western Europe. And the idea, as I've said a hundred times now, that NATO is somehow something that, that costs us too much or whatever is, is absurd. NATO has one fundamental principle inside of it called Article 5. The one time Article 5 has ever been called to the fore in history 9-11. Is on 9-11, where America asked NATO to step up and help protect us, and they did. The idea that you would oppose NATO tells me everything about your garbage, shitbird, low-life, low-rent, nationalist, populist philosophy. You think you're going to roll up, the, roll up the, the borders. You think you're going to build a wall. You think that the world is going to go away because you put your head up your ass. It will not. <laughs> NATO is a fundamental element of American national security policy, and the grown-ups are still here supporting it in on both sides of the political aisle. If there's one thing that I, that I find that I find heartening out of that is that only a third of these assholes have self-selected to be on the goddamn list because these people who who honestly believe that that NATO is somehow makes us weak or that NATO somehow costs too much or that NATO is somehow the, this relic of the past. If you didn't notice, Ukraine, unfortunately not being a member of NATO, has had wholesale slaughter in its streets because of a Russian invasion. That's right. And, and, and these people are fundamentally immature and they are fundamentally childlike. And I don't mean that in a good way. They're not, they're not, they're not children with their, their sort of naive hearts. These people believe that Vladimir Putin is a hero, that NATO is an impediment to him, and therefore we should just roll back over, lie back and think of Russia. Which is just unfathomable to me, Rick. And, and if you would have asked us, and sure. as members of the Republican Party, just a few short years ago, if we would ever be in a time 
when Republicans didn't support NATO while Russia was invading a, a, a sovereign nation that borders yep. NATO countries, we would have told you you're out of your minds. Like it, how right. far this has turned. And, and this is getting worse. This wasn't just five or 10. It wasn't just Gosar and Marjorie, Marjorie Taylor Greene and Cawthorn and, and, and Gohmert and the other idiots. 63 Republicans. Right. That right. is not a blip. And I think it's really important for people to understand what these people are supporting. I don't know if you saw this clip. I saw it on 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 the the interwebs, but the good liars, great oh, great perfect cl- account I saw to follow. It. Please follow them. But they go to these Trump rallies and ask these morons these at these Trump rallies questions, and I don't know how they keep a straight face with some of these answers. They actually asked a woman if she would prefer Putin or Biden, Biden. as president. And yep, she I saw it. picked Putin. She didn't she even was, blink. She didn't even blink, she didn't Tara. Even blink. But we saw we saw elements of this during the campaign before where those assholes were wearing shirts that had I'd rather be a uh I'd rather support Putin than be a Democrat or something like that. It was right. crazy. Like so this flirting with the idea that Putin is somehow someone to be admired and to raise up and that we'd rather have him than de- than Democrats. Right. This is per this is permeating the base Republican base. Sure. And they have their minions, they have their people that are becoming Putin's useful idiots in the propaganda war. So you have this genocide that's, go- that's happening and people are being reluctant to use the term, but we're not here because we no. see what's going on in Ukraine. The world sees what's going on in right. Ukraine. And I want to play this ad that Rick and your team, you guys, this is, this is spectacular work. Unbelievable. One of the most that, powerful let me, ads. Let me just say this, folks, before we air it. Sure. This is a long weekend. This is not an ad we wanted to make. This is not an ad we thought, oh, wow, this will be fun to make. We make a lot of ads that actually are fun while mm-hmm. we're making them. I got to tell you, we spent the weekend working on this because we saw what was, what was out there, and we saw the contrast, and we identified the people that were the most important parts of denying it. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to say anything else. I'll let you guys take a look at it. Take a look. People are dying on the front lines. You think it's a joke? Why do I care? Why do I care what's going on in the conflict between Ukraine and Russia? We're not an ally of Ukraine. Keep saying ally, ally. We're not. You got this minx accord and the stuff kind of bouncing around. That we're not an ally. They're not an ally. Why shouldn't I root for Russia? Which I am. About Vladimir Putin, you know, I analogize him to basically an authoritarian gas station attendant. Why does permanent Washington hate him so much? Has Putin ever called me a racist? Has he threatened to get me fired for disagreeing with him? Putin ain't woke. He is anti-woke. No, Vladimir Putin didn't do any of that. He's going to go in and be a peacekeeper. I said, how smart is that? In American terms, you would call Ukraine a tyranny. We've never been an ally of Ukraine. That's the strongest peace force I've ever seen. There were more army tanks than I've ever seen. They're going to keep peace all right. What the Russians did was an attack. I don't care. We could use that on our southern border. This is genius. I'm in the city of Bucha, and it's Corso, the capital. What happened here and everywhere in Ukraine, what is happening, this is not special operation. This is not military objects. This is civilians. They've been shot in the head with the tight hands behind their back. This is a genocide of the Ukrainian population. And that's exactly what Russian regime, Putin's regime, Russian army is doing. Killing the civilians with the tight hands behind their back and with the shot in their heads. Rick, that that ad is one of the most emotionally intense ads I think you guys have ever. Out of the three hundred plus so. Lincoln Project ads, I that it's hard to watch, but it's a reality. The sad reality that you guys even have to do that 
because you have, not only do you have the propagandists in Russia who are trying to deny this, you have their useful idiot minions here in the United That's States right. that are also latching on to this false narrative that somehow this could be That's a right. false flag, that these are actors questioning, look at where the bodies are placed. How dare they? How dare they? Dare yeah, they I, and then I, try I wanna, to say that they are patriots and support freedom in this country. I, I want to say a few things about this, folks. And and I am not a person given to emotional outbursts of short temper. I have a very steady temper. I don't I don't I don't lose my shit. I just don't. I am congenitally unable to panic or lose my shit in a real way. But I've got to tell you, that motherfucker Tucker Carlson went on TV last night, didn't mention Buka. You know why? Because he doesn't work for American values, doesn't work for an American company. He works for Vladimir Putin. I satirically poked Glenn Greenwald, who is one of Vladimir Putin's most aggressive ass kissers in the world, a huge influencer, a guy hypothetically on the left and yet always on Fox. And Glenn was so angry that I satirized the way that he behaves and that I satirized his praise of Putin concerning the Buka massacre. Why did I do that? It's because he'd been out there saying, well, I don't know if it's real. It looks like it could be blah, blah, blah. I've seen no evidence. There's evidence in the goddamn streets. There are bodies with their hands tied behind their backs shot in the goddamn head. There are people shot on their steps. There are children shot in the street. There are kids showing up at hospitals with rectal vaginal tearing, kids as young as 10 years old. So if you're defending or pretending this isn't, it isn't real or it's some neocon plot to trick America into war, you should go fuck yourselves hard, deep, and with commitment. Leave the country. If, you're, if, you, if you are so wrapped up in your fantasies of nationalist populism and believe that Vladimir Putin is your daddy and he's going to save the world and he's <laughs> going to protect white Christianity, go to Russia. Leave. Leave. You're not a part of the American or the world community. Because if you don't believe that genocide, just like the things you're seeing now, because there are cell phone cameras and because everybody's got a video camera in their hand, didn't happen in 1938 and 39. And if we'd had those tools in our hands, hmm. if Europe had, had had those tools in their hands during the Nazi Holocaust, if you don't think the world would have looked differently, we would have been there faster, harder, it, it, more intensely, you're a fool. This is happening now. And I, I analogize all these people uh, on the Trump right and some on the left. A little diversion here, folks, for a second. The Rwandan genocide in the modern era is the, is the most pound for pound, the worst genocide in the modern era mm -hmm. since world war II. about 3 million people were murdered for a year or two before the, the, the war started the propaganda radio stations. That was what they had at the time broadcast all this constant stream of propaganda, calling the enemies insects, worms, defilers, child rapists, predators, cannibals, all mm -hmm. these things. Dehumanizing them, so to make it easier to slaughter exactly. them. Exactly. And what happened after that, when the war crimes tribunals happened? They brought these people from the, from the propaganda stations to The Hague. And they brought them to justice. And they said things like, well, we knew we were spreading petrol all over the country. We just didn't know when the match would get lit. The match has been lit. It's been lit by Vladimir Putin. And the people here that are defending it and pretending it's not real and saying, well, the bodies are spaced very neatly. Let me tell you something. If that's what you actually believe, right. get psychiatric help. But that's not what most of you actually believe. Most of you are just doing it as trolls. Most of you are doing it because you believe that it, it's better to have Putin than Biden. It is a disgusting, horrifying set of behaviors. And, and the people that are out there cheerleading that Orban won a, a rigged election yesterday. In Hungary. And that, in Hungary. And that the Serbian, Putin friend in Serbia won an election. Guys, this is what we tell you all the time. It's what we tell you all the time. It's a global movement for autocracy. 
Mm -hmm. It's a global movement against democratic freedom and liberty. I am not a Democrat, but I love democracy. I'm not a Republican, but I love this republic. And these people will burn it all down around you. And if you don't get your asses in gear and get out and vote this November and get out and vote in 2024, we will not be the country you think we are. You cannot be lazy about this. You cannot rest on this. You cannot think that these people will not use this massive propaganda tool they have at their disposal um, to, to do everything they can to tear down everything we treasure. One last thing. Glenn it's Greenwald, a republic if you can, if keep, you can it. keep it. One last thing. I, I, I have to apologize to Glenn Greenwald for one thing. He said I questioned his patriotism. Glenn, I did not question your patriotism. I know that you are loyal to Vladimir Putin and Russia to the very bottom of your soul. <laughs> And with that, we will move on. Well, just ask Ed, Ed Snowden, that wonderful patriot who. Yeah, I mean, um, let me tell you. Let me tell you if I'm, was, if I'm Snowden, handler. I'm like, I'm not sitting next to any windows, <laughs> drinking any tea. Well, um, Rick, that uh, I, I I can't even top anything you just said. And um, well done, w well done, my friend. I will say this. Um, it's a good transition, actually, to lighten this a minute because that was heavy. We had a MAGA Madness um, Final Four March Madness tournament thing that Lincoln Project did. And in conjunction with the uh, actual Final Four and National College <laughs> Championship, congrats to the to the Kansas Jayhawks. Uh, Sam, one of our producers, is a, is a Jayhawk fan. He's from Kansas. So is Sam congrats. a Jayhawk fan? I hadn't yes, noticed that he, Sam's yeah, a Jayhawk fan. Because Sam's a Jayhawk fan. <laughs> yes. And, you know, I, uh, I'm a Carolina Austin. fan, even though I didn't go there. But uh, I like UNC, and I could, can't believe that they came back uh, from that deficit to win. Listen, I'm all for a, a a good March Madness game, so congrats to the Jayhawks on that. However, the results are in of the Lincoln Project MAGA Madness. Yes, they and, are. Yes, and the final four for us, it was Marjorie Taylor Greene, um, Mitch McConnell, Tucker Carlson, and uh, who was the fourth one? I forget now, but it doesn't matter. Uh, Ted Cruz, that's right, Ted Cruz. So in the final, it was Tucker Carlson versus Marjorie Taylor Greene. Guess who won? Go on. Tucker Carlson. Tucker! He won. Why are we surprised we're not? He won. Congrats, Tucker, for being the absolute worst of the worst of MAGA Madness. And I think to your point, Rick, the reason why he beat out Marjorie Taylor Greene, I think, is because Tucker actually has a platform where he is spewing this bullshit, this, right. this very dangerous, vile right. bullshit to millions of people. And the Kremlin is using him as an example to boost what they're doing over in Russia with their propaganda. I this I'm is telling you, Tara, he deserves this. I mean, we did this, folks, tongue in cheek. Because we really believe that it's it's something people think about and how you how you winnow down who the worst or best players are in a in a in a in a field. Yeah, it's something everybody gets. Everybody gets March Madness, right? Mm -hmm. But again, I go back to last night where the world is riveted by by a brutal slaughter of civilians in Ukraine conducted by Russian forces conducted by the 64th Motor Rifle Division. And folks, the Ukrainians have kindly put out all of their names and their identify, identifying features um, online. But Tucker didn't mention it last night. Isn't that weird? Isn't that strange that, He's that Fox a... News decides just not to mention one of the biggest stories of our era? Of our era. Uh, uh, that, is be, that is being documented in real time in ways that we have never seen before. Right. And you know, uh, Pre uh, President Biden called Rupert Murdoch the most dangerous man in the world. We, you know, we, I, we, once, I, we, called, were, we once called him the, the the most dangerous immigrant who ever came to our shores. Yes. And l once again, um, Lincoln Project was ahead of the curve on that. And uh, for the president of the United States to identify him that way is pretty significant, given because he recognizes the damage that Fox News and Rupert Murdoch's empire is doing, because these movements around the world are bo are bolstered by this. And this is not a joke, people. This is not a joke. What we're facing here, we are staring down an attack on freedom and the rise of tyranny light and tyranny people who are tyranny um, apologists. Tyranny curious. Yeah. Ty tyranny curious. Yes. And, and we have to put a stop to that.
Absolutely. And I want to, as we end the show tonight, I want to give you a uh, uh, credit, Rick, again, because not only did with ads like genocide and, and the work you guys have been doing, but um, I know that you're humble and you, you, you don't want to brag, but Lincoln Project was nominated for what's called the Webby Award, which is kind of like the Grammys of the Oscars of, of uh, ads. And um, congratulations, you guys. You guys got a, no a nomination for the corporate campaign, the corporate responsibility campaign that Lincoln Project was a part of last year. Uh, that's the AT&T stuff and all of that, which is so important. And we thank all of our supporters for that because that is an example of where when the righteous anger, anger of the American people yeah. is put together and focused, things can change. We saw OANN get taken out because of it. AT&T was held to account. Toyota. And we see Toyota, that's right. And an LP, it, this is part of our tent poles of things that LP Lincoln Project is doing going into the midterm. So if you um, want to, you guys can vote uh, at, over at the Webby Awards for your favorite ad. So I hope you hope folks go and vote for Lincoln Project so you guys can bring home the prize. Well, I, I, um, but, well Tara, yeah. in, in, in that regard, I just want to thank everybody on the production side. Um, and, and, and if I miss anybody, I'm so sorry I'm doing the Academy Award thing right now. Um, this couldn't happen without Michelle Kinney. Who, who runs all the creative air traffic control and and manages the most complex multivariate job it, probably in the Lincoln Project. Amen. Uh, our editors, Ben and Joey and Kate and Riley and Jeff and all the other folks that work inside of our of our amazing creative team and and some of our and our outside producers. Uh, you know, I can't even list them all, but I'm enormously grateful to to have their their help every day. And you know when when Stuart and I come up with an ad, it is something that they can translate into a vision, um, in ways that 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 will punch you in the gut or make you think or make you laugh. And really, just proud of this team. They're just tremendous folks, and uh, and I, I couldn't be happier to work with all of them. Listen, Rick, I often say that what you guys do, you guys are the heart and soul of the Lincoln Project. So it's um it's nice to to have you guys recognized by your peers. So you guys want to vote supporters go over to the Webby awards and uh, vote for Lincoln project. We'd appreciate that. Um, and just so you know, there's more stuff coming up with AT&T. Judd Legum had a report that was pretty devastating that AT&T has gone back on their pledge not to support certain folks and some mm -hmm. of the money that they've been giving to some problematic legislators, both on this, the, the state and local level and on the federal level. Yeah. That, that, there from the abortion ban in Texas. In a, there might even yeah. be an ad coming along on that. Yes, they've given 574000 to politicians behind the Texas voter suppression legislation. That's no bueno. 300000 to the Texas abortion ban, folks. Yep. Um, and now their shareholders are demanding a report, an accounting of where this political money has gone. So yeah, and, we are. AT&T is watching. resisting, resisting yes. that. They've directed their shareholders. Why. The board opposes this motion. Well, get ready to get famous, everybody. <laughs> yep, that's right. Well, um, on that note, I think it's time to debut our latest ad um, in line with your very passionate um, uh, speech tonight, Rick. Uh, we need to reemphasize the importance of the moment that we're in and the seriousness of it and be grateful that we have adults in the room, competent leadership at the helm. Because no one wants to go back to what we were, what we faced for four years. We do not Very want much. these people back in power. And um, I want to debut our latest Lincoln Project ad. It's called Serious Times. The war in Ukraine has entered a new phase of brutality as Russia seems to be targeting civilians trying to flee their country. This is a moment for leadership. Pregnant women and children have become the latest victims of this war. This is a moment for strength. Russia expands its war to every part of Ukraine, striking a military base less than 15 miles from the Polish border. This is a moment for wisdom and experience. Be not afraid. This is a moment to strengthen alliances. Never, ever give up hope. This is a moment for courage. Never doubt. This is a moment for compassion. Never tire. This is a moment for truth over propaganda. It will not be easy. This is a moment for one president. There will be cause. America's president. This is the task of our time. This is a moment for President Joe Biden. Be not afraid. Uh, 
Ah, yes. Meeting the moment. Meeting the moment. Absolutely. Some are called and some show up and some are, are meant to be there. And he was meant to be there. 100%. And we are grateful that he is. Well, on that note, folks, that is it for tonight's show. Uh, be sure to tune in tomorrow for our sister show, We're Speaking. And then we'll be back on Thursday for more because it's never a dull moment around here no, at indeed. Lincoln Project. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for supporting Good night, us. everybody. Thanks so much. On Thursday.